Hey everybody, this is Jonathan Schrantz, and today I'm going to share with you this really interesting weapon that you can play against the French defense. There is a sideline in the Two Knights variation that actually contains a lot of traps, and it has had a lot of victims, so I actually want to keep in mind just how many people have actually fallen for this as we go through it, because it's really incredible. And the Two Knights variation of the French, which occurs after Knight f3, d5, Knight c3, is by itself a very interesting opening. But after the moves knight to f6, pawn to e5, so far so normal, we can see that really the only move is knight f to d7. And after d4, black plays the very normal pawn to c5, the typical French move. And here is where I'm actually going to say that we should deviate a little bit and take a look at a very interesting line here. D takes c5 is for sure the main line. You can see here there's a thousand games with D takes c5 maybe 100 games with bishop to b5. And I actually want to go down the list, though, and find this move, bishop to g5, which has been played in less than 50 master games here. So I'm actually, I'm going to, in just a minute, we're going to switch over to the Lee Chess database, but you get the idea that this is a very rare line. But there's a lot of people when we switch over to the Lee Chess database, meaning we're now going to be looking at games that have been played on this website between players of all ranges and all different time controls. And this is going to give us a much better picture of what actually happens when players play and all of the tricks and traps that people are actually falling for, especially at the amateur level. Because this is all of the ratings, so a lot of these are going to be lower rated players falling for traps, but that's perfect. That's what we want to figure out here. And the first thing you'll notice is most players are going to be playing queen to b6. This is the main line, so we're definitely going to come back and take a look here. This is like the most natural French move in the world. It puts pressure on the center, which is like the key focus, the whole reason for black's play. And it attacks his b2 pawn, which black might take, but in a lot of cases, it might be a trap to take that b pawn. However, you will notice like a lot of people have actually made some other mistakes, uh, including knight to c6. So this has actually trapped 3,016 people. This is kind of like a, maybe this was a lot of bullet games, maybe it's just a lot of pre-moves. So there's this pre-move bullet trick that uh, does result immediately in a loss of a queen. So there's 3,000 people that have actually messed up this opening. But a probably more common mistake that people are playing is something like bishop to e7, and this is 8,709 people have played this move. Uh, whereas, I mean, this is almost as popular as queen to b6. So this could be a, a one of these variations that a lot of people are falling for. So we're now over 10,000 people that have fallen for traps in this line, and we're not even to the real stuff yet. Um, but the reason is, it, it feels normal to develop a piece. It feels like, you know, we develop and we castle, but here the dark squared weaknesses are actually really felt on the queen side. And in a lot of these lines, you know, black would have loved to have the pawn on a6 already, because after knight to b5, white is already peeking in at these dark squares, and no matter what black does, it's going to be a disaster. So, for example, I mean, if you just castle, which is the main move, apparently, knight to c7 is going to win the rook, and sure, maybe our knight is going to get buried in there, maybe the knight is not going to come out alive, but at minimum, white is going to win an exchange here. But the other problem is, if a move like uh, knight to a6, which covers the c7 square, then simply knight to d6, going to the other dark square, is going to be very strong for white. Black now has just an uncomfortable position, and white is just going to continue to like develop the stuff, castles, and might even get an, an attack over on the king side. So something like this can be really dangerous because black just simply can't defend all of the dark squares. So already we've seen these are sort of like some basic beginner mistakes, but they're actually uh, a lot more common than I, I thought. So something like that could lead your opponent into a lot of trouble. But queen to b6 is what is what uh, what should be expected from most French players, not trading the dark squared bishops. And just simply, again, the whole point of the French is you kind of want to bring out all your stuff. You want to put as much pressure on the center and just tell white, like, okay, I'm going to win your center pawns. And it's also taking aim at this b pawn. But now, after the move, d takes c5, I really like this move, because it gives black a lot of choices, and some of these choices are just not good. The main line here is bishop takes c5, so this is going to be kind of the main focus here of what we should be thinking about. There's also knight takes c5, and I think this line is actually objectively equal. It's not the most combative way for black to play, but it's not the worst thing that he could do either. But uh, even there, I do think there are one or two tricks that maybe we can take a look at. 
But then there's queen takes b2, which is another option that a lot of players are going to be tempted to play. But here again, we've seen 695 people have actually fallen for this trap. This move actually loses on the spot. It's very tempting because it comes with some tempo. You know, you're also attacking this knight. You're not going to be able to defend it with your queen because then maybe your rook would be hanging. But again, we see the same move being uh, the winning move here, the winning idea for white is knight to b5. And again, we're just peeking in on these squares. And we also have some ideas of either trapping this queen uh, in a lot of different ways, or potentially just keeping the queen so far offside that white always has compensation and always has some ideas of trapping the queen. For example, one idea for trapping a queen, just to put them on the radar, in these kinds of positions, maybe you can get all your stuff out in castle, and maybe you, know, maybe you can get all these rooks into the game. Uh, maybe somehow your rooks will be able to attract the queen. More likely, in a position like this, it might even be a tricky maneuver, like bishop to d2 to c3. Something like this might potentially trap a queen. You'll notice if we get our bishop on this diagonal, whether it's e3, d4, or c2, uh, for d2 to c3, something like this actually could potentially trap the queen over here. So that's just a good idea to have on your radar in these kinds of positions. But here, for example, uh, if black plays what seems to be the most natural move, you know, defend that c7 square, White has a lot of ways to win. The easiest is just to play rook to b1. This, uh, take a look at where the queen can go. The answer is uh, not a lot of places. The queen is forced to go here. And we've sacrificed a pawn so that we can actually switch back to the A file. And after the queen moves, we can now snatch this knight, removing the defender of this square. And what's actually curious about here is that most players have played uh, b takes a6 because this obviously just removes the defender, but it actually blunders a checkmate in one. So black needs to like just make some random move here, but then obviously black is losing if it can't recapture the, the material. But uh, yeah, knight to c7 is actually a checkmate. The idea is look at this bishop. The bishop is doing an awesome job covering all the diagonals and uh, the knight gives the checkmate. So it's actually kind of curious here. 87 people, this is like the most popular move is to actually blunder mate and one in this position. So you can get an idea of just how dangerous this can be, um, D takes C5 in this position. But okay, let's assume they don't fall for this trap, they take with their knight. So something like this is actually very close to equal. If we do turn the computer on, it will say, okay, 0, 0.0, it recommends bishop to E3. It looks like most humans have been playing uh, queen to d2. I don't necessarily think this is correct because yeah, black can kind of just ignore stuff But the way people have been playing is that if they take here rook b1 You can just kind of argue maybe you do have some sort of compensation I'm not sure if I actually believe it. So what I think might actually be another interesting option is Instead of playing queen to d2 and sacrificing this pawn one interesting thing that you can do is you can play bishop to e2 leaving this pawn hanging for yet another turn and this gives uh, white the opportunity to now go in and try to grab this. Not a lot of people have played this variation, but you know, there are nine people that have gone in for queen takes b2, which yet again, due to the fact that we've, we've intentionally kept our queen on the first rank, we can now play knight to b5, which yet again is going to be a very strong continuation. So something like the knight comes out, uh, a3, which is very important to prevent this knight from going here. If knight b4, sometimes black is counterplay on the c2 pawn, so even if black is giving up this rook, sometimes uh, it can do it with a lot of counterplay that could be uh, kind of out of control. So a3 is a key move here, and then it does look like probably we're now threatening some sort of uh, trap here. If we get another turn, bishop e3 is what we'd be playing. If you guys don't know, you can hit X if you're on Lee Chess. This will tell you kind of what the, the threats are. So if we get another turn, we should just be winning here. But even something like this, rook to b1, uh, looks very promising for white because the queen's really trapped out here. You're not really going to be able to take this knight because we're taking back with check and getting a huge attack. So even if we don't win the queen, and we probably will somehow someday, uh, then it's still going to be very promising with all of the activity white has. Uh, so something like this is great. So bishop to e2 is one of the interesting moves. It's not the only move, but uh, bishop to e2 for castles is just kind of an interesting idea in these positions. Uh, okay, but if we head back here, let's actually jump into the main line here. So by far, most players are going to be taking back with the bishop. You can see this is 5,000 games. Everything else is like 1,000 games put together. So by far, bishop takes c5 is going to be what the average player is going to be playing. And here is where we can set the nastiest trap of all of these positions. And it comes after queen to d2. 
And now, for sure, you know, Black should be really, really careful here. And there are a lot of mistakes that have already been made. And the two main mistakes are Queen takes B2, and we definitely want to examine this and understand why this is a big mistake. And beyond that, Bishop takes F2, which has this idea of removing the queen from the defense of the knight, uh, is one of the higher level mistakes that a lot of stronger players are going to fall for. Because this kind of looks like a move that maybe white missed initially, you know, uh, and let, we'll just kind of get into it. But the main way of playing should be knight to here. And this is actually a very reasonable way for black to play, but there are some traps that we can actually set for the opponent here as well. For example, one of the moves that I really like in this position is to just simply castle. And black might now consider taking here or might now consider taking on f2. So for example, if they do actually take on f2, the main idea here is knight to a4. And somehow, some way, black is actually going to want to move the queen to one of these squares. And for our purposes, for this trap that we're gonna set up, it actually doesn't really matter which one we do. So let's pick the most popular one. If we take back now, we allow them to take here, and we simply defend this pawn, either with a3 or king to b1, we've actually set yet another trap. So here's nine more victims have fallen for this move. And the evaluation here, so I mean, so black is actually up a pawn. Uh, so something like this actually should be pretty good for black. But I think if they do just castle, uh, hopefully we can maybe <laughs> uh, just get some sort of big attack, have some sort of initiative. It's, uh, you know, just castling and black is actually doing really well here. But uh, the trap is, if they take here, which is the most tempting thing in the world, the, there is a totally winning way to play as white. And here you may want to pause and try to find it. This is really nice. So this is really sweet. This is something that really can, uh, can win. And it's one of the backbones for the traps that we're going to see later in this lecture. But here we can take, knight takes back, and uh, do you see it? Go ahead and pause again. Here is where we can now play the winning move which I guess is already on your screen. Queen to c5, which creates just two threats and is completely unstoppable. So we're going to try to play uh, checkmate and we're also threatening just to play uh, bishop to b5. So something like this would be incredibly winning. For example, if the queen goes back trying to defend the square, we have bishop back, uh, knight to c6, and then rook takes d5. An absolutely incredible move. The big idea, of course, that you can't open up the e-file. So something like this is just monstrously strong for white. So it would be really easy to imagine somebody actually falling in for a, uh, a trap like that, uh, which is really cool. I mean, I think that's, that's the kind of thing that you want because that's the kind of thing a real opponent might actually fall for. So, uh, but anyways, if they, if they do play this line, and they, in this position, they take back with their bishop. After we play queen to d2, they should probably just continue with developing and get on with life. But obviously, it's very easy to fall in for a lot of traps. In particular, this move yet again comes into play. And whenever the queen is on d2, it, is, it means that we're no longer defending this rook. So rook to b1, queen to a3, and now yet again, knight to b5 is a really strong, powerful move by white. So here again, we can see that we are completely winning. We are attacking this thing. We're threatening to come here. So if queen takes a2, knight to c7, something like this uh, will win the game. Okay, so if yet again, this pawn is poisoned, what players with the black pieces might do, and this is the really cool line, this one is very, very fascinating, is they might say, okay, I see immediately, you know, then this happens and this happens, a stronger player might just see right through that, and they, they might think, oh, I've actually out-tricked white. Uh, I have bishop takes f2, which usually is the computer move. This, the computer says it was it's minus 1, uh, minus 2. It's kind of in that territory, right? Let's, uh, let's keep the engine on for just a minute so we can kind of walk through this trap together. So bishop takes f2. This removes the queen from the defense of the b-pawn. So now when the queen takes on b2, the black queen is now actually taking a look at both the rook and the knight. So it's not going to be incredibly easy to save both. But here is where it gets interesting. Uh, take note of what the computer says. But we're going to play king to d2, and it will immediately freak out. But I think it actually will calm down pretty quickly once it realizes what's happening here. We are sacrificing an entire rook in this position. But the main idea now, and I think now it sees it, is bishop to b5. 
So creating this pin, we already have this nasty guy on this diagonal, and now we're asking the queen a question because we're attacking the queen. So the queen really must do something about it, and we see this amazing idea yet again. The winning idea for white is queen to c5, creating some threats here. And the computer will uh, continue to think about it. It'll churn and think, and eventually it will demonstrate that white is actually winning. Uh, and so part of the problem is this thing's pinned, so we are threatening checkmate. What black will probably do is they'll want to take on g2 with a queen. But now after king to c1, we're simply going to be escaping any checks. So if black thinks maybe there's perpetual, no way, we can just run to b2. We can be totally safe. You don't have time to grab our knight because there is this checkmate threat. So essentially what uh, happens here is that uh, it, it becomes impossible without sacrificing the queen to stop all of these threats. So the main ways of doing it are knight to c6 or just capitulating immediately and taking this bishop. Another mistake that I've seen, and I actually know somebody that was going to become a master. They were playing this as black and they were like 21.99 rated and they were just about to become a master, but then somebody whipped out this trick uh, on them and, and it actually, like he, he played this move f6. So he didn't know this, he fell in for all this preparation. And that's the story of how one person didn't get to 2200. But um, this doesn't help at all, because now you take here, you're still threatening this mate, and taking back will never really help, because you're still threatening mate, and I mean, something like this doesn't help whatsoever, so f6 is just not a great defense. Something better is here, or just giving up the bishop right away, but now we will take back, this creates a threat, so at, at some point you can't take back yet, so you will have to give up the queen, and after some recaptures, we get a very interesting position where uh, white still needs to probably get some material back, and we, and we can start with queen takes c6, attacking this rook. After the rook moves, there's two interesting knight sacrifices, and I think they actually both win. Uh, for a while, I think the computer is going to say knight takes d5 is the best. It's possible that knight takes e6 is the best. Um, for, for a human point of view, it's worth pointing out both of these lines. And we'll just do it with the computer on so we can all get kind of an idea of how these lines work. Knight takes d5 is the most popular move with an idea that after this recapture, there is pawn to e6. If you don't take this knight, if you just castle, whatever, there's going to be this check. And then we have some ideas of either taking right here and just winning some material back. But there's also a pretty strong case to be made for just kind of keeping the pieces near the king. Something like this is going to force some weaknesses. You're gonna to have to play f5 or g6. And whatever you do, somehow the queens and the knights are gonna be hovering around the king. This could also get very dangerous. But if you don't wanna do that, you could also just cash in now, win some material. Uh, but okay, so black should just definitely be taking this knight. And after e6, you're never going to be able to take here. Because if you take here, we're taking back with our queen. You're not going to be able to run into mate in one. You're going to have to go this way, and the knight and queen combo is simply going to be very, very strong and very, very deadly in a position like this. So uh, if that's the case, you will need to play a move like pawn to f6, where there's a lot of good options. I mean, running, just running away and maintaining this pin and then trying to win some material, that's a fine option. Queen to d6, threatening to remove the defender of the rook, is also a very strong option. Uh, for example, if here, we can even play like queen to c7 is one of the interesting moves, and you're just kind of keeping a bunch of threats. You can keep a bunch of threats, or you can just kind of cash in now with some idea that uh, you might be able to win some material. So something like this, it would go something like this. Uh, and you can try to win this endgame. It might be a little bit tough, but you know white should be doing very well in an endgame like this. A lot of the black pawns are weak. So that is one of the endgames that you can shoot for if you do play for this main line here. And another interesting case is here. I think this is hard for a human to play, so maybe you do want to, for practical reasons, play knight takes d5. But this might objectively be a little bit stronger. But uh, there are some very interesting lines that I think even the computer, like the computer finds them and it's like easy, but they're, they're really remarkable. And I think the one that's the most interesting is this rook to f8 line. There's really no way of stopping white from playing pawn to e6 and doing all sorts of stuff with the pin. But one interesting variation is after rook f1, I feel like that's a very human move. Uh, and then even in this position, you know, maybe we give a check, force the king to e1, maybe taking here would be very normal. And what's interesting is there's really only one move for white. Uh, maybe queen a5 is also interesting. But like the computer here, it'll like never actually <laughs> directly take this knight. It kind of chills out. Uh, one of our main points is we're trying to threaten to push this pawn and promote it. But yeah, it'll kind of like take the time and it's never really, it's just kind of toying with the food. Queen to f7. We're just trying to push, push. Um, so we're kind of forcing black to move around. Something like this is easy for a computer to play. 
you know, maybe now we can give more checks, we can push this pawn. But maybe this is actually objectively the strongest way for white to play. But in any case, if you can just remember the, the one main trap in this opening, uh, you will get great positions all the time. So after we take, they take back here one more time. Just the main trap is the really cool one. Uh, if they take here, we will simply take back. And here is where we defend our knight, offer a rook for this big pin and the idea of queen to c5. And this is the idea that will win a lot of different chess games for you. Uh, black is actually pretty powerless here. You can give up this or you can play here first. And in either case, white actually should get a very, very uh, good position that probably actually is winning. So I, I thought this line was really cool. If you guys do like these kinds of openings, these rare lines that actually are really tricky and they have a whole lot of traps in them, uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel and make sure you check everything out. Go check out a lot of my past videos because I make these kinds of videos all the time. So uh, hopefully you guys liked it and come on, subscribe. I'll see you guys for another video.